everyone, welcome to the Oaklords YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're gonna make probably one of the nicest bags I have made in a while. I don't know, guys, we make a lot of really nice bags, but this bag is so great, it will become your everyday bag. You're going to love it. Today, we're going to make the Ojima, which is a pattern that comes to us from Country Cow Designs in conjunction with Bed Hog Shop. So I really love the backstory of this pattern. This design actually comes to us from Amy Hutton of Bed Hog Shop. Uh, I guess she designed the pattern, she got together with Country Cow Designs and they put it into a pattern pattern for all of us to follow and be able to make ourselves. Uh, so I'm so grateful that you guys did that. Thank you. I mean, there's amazing bag designers out there. And as somebody who has attempted to write a pattern, but uh, I'm not, not, don't have that skill set. Um, Getting your ideas onto paper into a readable way so that other people can make them, that's, that's, an, that's an incredible talent. So I'm so grateful that they got together and allowed us all to make this. I know my strap is kind of flailing around. So let's take a better look at this bag real quick. All right, so you can see this is a crossbody bag. It has a nice crossbody strap. The pattern does not have a strap designated as a removable strap. So you can see it is attached using rectangle rings. If you wanted to make a removable strap, you can definitely do that. Instead of the rectangle rings, use D-rings, and then just add some swivel hooks like we've done many times with crossbody straps on the channel. This bag on the front has this adorable little magnetic flap. Once you lift that up, you have this cute little pocket. This is a really fun, it's called a cargo pocket. It has these nice little folds on it. Gives it a lot of great dimension, but this is a great pocket because it's not super bulky when you're sewing it. On the back, we have a slip pocket. It is a magnetic slip pocket. I would say, depending on the material, you probably don't need to use the magnet if you don't want to. I know a lot of people like to just have a basic slip pocket because they slide their phone in and out of it all day. Uh, but for the extra security, the magnet is really nice. And we all love a slip pocket against our body. I mean, that's just like, I, that's one of my favorite things is having a bag have a zip pocket or slip pocket that's right against the body because again, that's where I slide my phone. If I just have to have my ID real quick, in and out, a badge, things like that. So actually the inside of this bag is so cool. I did opt for the double zipper pulls. I do like that, especially as an everyday bag. It just makes it quick and easy to get in and out. So you have two pockets in here. You have this beautiful zip pocket with this awesome detailing. I do highly recommend you give it a try. If you've never tried a pocket like this, follow along. It is, I would say it's actually easier than most recessed zippers. So definitely give it a try. Don't be scared away by it. It is fancy, but it doesn't mean it's harder. On the other side, we have a slip pocket that has this beautiful little detailing right here of cork, which again, definitely do it. Do both of these pockets. I would say, if you're going to make this bag, make all of it. It doesn't have a ton of bells and whistles. The pockets that are in it are all very unique. They're all different, right? We have a flap magnetic pocket. We have a slip magnetic pocket. We have a slip pocket with cork detailing. And then we have a zip pocket, again, with cork detailing. There are four different types of pockets give each one of them a try. You will learn a lot and none of them are that challenging. You do see we have some curves here. This is a bag with binding. This is not a bag we're turning out or birthing. So you can see we do have that beautiful binding here. Highly recommend you do that. I mean, I'm sure you could hack it so you could flip it right side out and birth it through a hole in the zipper pocket in the lining. But I do recommend the binding because the binding provides this great structure. You just, you see this, I don't have any Decoville heavy in this. I'm not even using foam. I'm just using wax canvas, waterproof canvas on this bag, waterproof canvas for the lining, and I did add some Decoville light. But the Decoville light I would say is pretty optional everywhere except the flap. The flap needs the Decoville light, but everywhere else, I think depending on the material you're using, you can get away with a lot here. So I do highly recommend when it comes to material using wax canvas for this gusset. This gusset here is wax canvas, the main panel on the front and the back, and then the flap, that's all wax canvas. I highly, highly recommend you give it a try. Wax canvas is so great for these tight corners because it's kind of putty-like. It's very malleable, malleable. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean. It's easy to manipulate. It's easy to work with. You can really get away with kind of like smushing the corners as you need to smush them to get around it when you're sewing. And then when you turn it out, it looks perfect. It might look a little crinkly when it's wrong side out, but then when you just kind of poke it through and turn it out, it looks fantastic. I love it. You, it, it makes tight corners easier, in my personal opinion. So if you're new to the Oak Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, please leave them down in the comment section. 
As always, there are timestamps that will be running along the bottom of the screen. They'll also be listed in the description of this video. The description is also where you're going to find links for all the products that I'm using today. Uh, to get over there, there's like a little arrow over here on the bottom corner of your screen. Just tap that and it should expand the description. Lots of information over there. This is a powder and I would say is a must-have stash powder and I think you really are going to love it. I think it is a great gift for anybody in your life, but it's also a great bag for you every day. Uh, let me get a step stool real quick and I'll show you what it looks like on. Okay, so this is not your grocery tote bag, right? You're not gonna put your milk jugs in here. <laughs> this is an everyday bag. This is a travel bag. Let me turn the strap around. There we go. I like to wear it as a crossbody. You obviously do not have to wear it across your chest. You could wear it over your shoulder. I'll show you that as well. But you can see it just hangs really nicely. It's not too tall, which I really appreciate because when bags get a little bit too, too tall, they kind of flap back and forth as you're walking, you know? So it's not too tall. It's but definitely big enough for your wallet, probably for your Kindle, maybe your small iPad. Um, and it's just, it's very flattering. I mean, you see that shape? Now let me show you it on the shoulder. And for reference, I'm five feet, four inches, and a size small or medium, depending on the day. But this is what it looks like. Isn't that so cute? I'll, again, this is, this is, this is a Jessica everyday bag. This is the exact type of bag I would wear every single day. All right, guys, this is a fun one. Let's get started. So for this pattern, you're gonna need a half a yard of exterior fabric. Now I'm gonna mix it up between this quilt cotton, this is a Rifle Paper Company quilt cotton, and some wax canvas. I love wax canvas, especially with these kind of tighter curves and the binding and everything. I feel like wax canvas is kind of putty-like and it makes it a lot easier to do those curves. Uh, so I'll be doing the wax canvas around the sides of the bag and then I'll be using the quilt cotton just for pretty much the pockets on the front and the back. You'll also need three quarters of a yard of lining material. I am using waterproof canvas, so this might be the water resistant canvas. Yeah, this is the lighter water resistant canvas. Uh, I love this because I don't have to interface this. And then also have like some scraps of cork or vinyl, something that can have raw edges, just if you want a little bit of the details. We're gonna be using this for the lining, just a couple of little pockets. Um, it is totally optional, but it does offer a really cool look. So I do highly encourage you to give it a try. So the only interfacing and stabilizer I'm using today is Decoville Light and Sofuse. The Sofuse is going to be used on anything that is a quilt cotton or cotton-like or anything that can stretch or fray. So I'm not using it on the wax canvas or the cork or the water resistant canvas. I'm only using it on those pockets that have the quilt cotton. And then I'm also gonna use Decoville Light. Now here's the thing, I'm using Decoville Light instead of foam. The pattern does suggest foam. Um, I prefer Decoville Light. The first bag I made, I used Decoville Light and to be completely honest, I don't even know if it needs it. With the water resistant canvas and the wax canvas, I'm not sure Decoville Light really does that much, but I am gonna use it. Uh, you can definitely use foam as well if you want a really nice structured um, fluffy bag. I just always prefer to use Decoville Light. So for this, you're gonna need about a half a yard. So here is my hardware. I will be using this beautiful bag strap today. You can buy lots of different fun straps. So this is just a one and a half inch wide strap. Um, it's gonna be very easy for me to just put it on the bag in the end. I always like to cut my straps down to about 60 inches, anywhere between 56 to 60 inches. Um, so that's the length of this. You can see I also already have a couple of scraps of the cork cut. These are both one inch by one and a half inch. And we'll be using that to just cover the raw edges of this. It leaves a really, really beautiful finish. Then I have a handful of rivets here. These are just size medium rivets. I get them from Emmeline Bags. You'll need a total of six of these. Then I have two magnetic snaps. Both of the pockets on the exterior do use magnetic snaps, so I just have two of these. Next, I have two zipper tapes, one for the exterior of the bag, one for the lining of the bag. Uh, the exterior, I'm gonna use two zipper pulls, so I have just two different cute zipper pulls here for that, and then I have another zipper pull for the lining of the bag. A bag tag, as always. And then you're gonna need your strap hardware, so it's gonna be two rectangle rings. This is not a removable strap. If you did wanna make this a removable strap, instead of the rectangle rings, go ahead and use D-rings, and then also add in two one and a half inch swivel hooks, so those are the little hooks, and you'll attach that to the strap over here but the version I'm making today is sticking with the pattern so it is not a removable strap so I'm using the rectangle rings and then I also have a one and a half inch wide slider so here's all the other stuff I'll be using this new thread here this is a Tex 45 weight thread it's from size swag I'm so excited to try this out it's one of my favorite colors this is actually a really great neutral color it doesn't look like it but it does actually blend in with colors really nicely 
Um, this is domestic friendly, so I'm going to be trying it out on the machine today. So that will be going through the needle on the top. In my bobbin though, I do always like to use a Guterman thread. This is just from Joann's. I like a lighter weight thread in the bobbin, but both of these are polyester. They're not cotton. My needle of choice today is a Microtex 8012. If you feel like you're using some pretty heavy duty material, you might want to bump that up to a 9014. I would stick with Microtex though. Microtex needles are very sharp, which is great for bags like this. This is a really cool new tool from the Heartwood and Hide, and this is going to be to help place my tag. So this is a little ruler with dots. Uh, if you purchase one of these, you need to make sure you purchase one for the size tag you're using. I'm using more of like a long skinny tag today. So this template goes with that size. And it's just going to help us place it exactly where we want it. So I'm excited to use that. You know, I like to have a lot of marking tools. So I have a chalk marking tool, which is really great for the wax canvas. I have a vinyl marking tool and I also have an air racing marking tool. These are just my go-to tools all the time. Uh, a stiletto is extremely helpful with those curves. I highly recommend you have a stiletto, a seam ripper, because again, who's perfect? Not me. And then my little turning tool here, which is nice. It's nice and blunt. It has two edges. I prefer this much over any of those like purple plastic ones. This is a really, really good turning tool. I have a healthy supply of clips, a one inch by six inch ruler, because that's just my go-to, a good pair of fabric scissors, Wash away double-sided tape. This is going to be helpful with zippers and everything like that. A lighter because lighters are really helpful in the sewing room, especially at cleaning up any little threads. And then I have some Beacon 3-in-1 glue. I'll be using this to help with covering up the back of the prongs of my magnetic snaps. And then I have a scrap piece of fusible fleece. This is also for the magnetic snaps. It just helps beef them up, cover them up, make sure nothing gets damaged. If you're using rivet magnetic snaps, so these are magnetic snaps where on one side it's the snap, on the back side instead of the prongs, it's a little rivet. You don't need to use this because that rivet is nice and smooth. It's not gonna damage any material. So let's go through the pattern pieces. First to start with, we have main panel A. I have two cuts of my wax canvas and then two cuts of my lining. This is just the main part of the bag. And then we have panel B, which is the flap. I have a cut of my wax canvas and then a cut of my lining. Then you're also gonna have pattern piece M, which is the Decoville light cut that goes on the back of your lining. So you can see I already adhered it. Uh, and this is gonna be the shape of the flap. So if you're like, hey, this is a rectangle that doesn't look like the flap in the picture, we are going to trim it down. So the Decoville light is the shape of the flap. And I just centered it on the back of my lining and adhered it just like that. Pattern piece C is that folded front cargo pocket. You're gonna have an exterior cut. This is where I'm using that beautiful quilt cotton. I already have it interfaced with the sew fuse, and then I also have a lining cut. And then pattern piece D is the slip pocket that goes on the back of the bag. Again, I'm using that quilt cotton that's already interfaced with the woven interfacing, and then a lining cut. Pattern pieces E and F are your gusset pieces. So you're gonna have two cuts of pattern piece E. These are your zipper gusset pieces. These are exterior and then also two cuts of lining. On the lining, I do already have a thin strip of Decoville light adhered to it. If you're using foam, then you're not going to adhere it, obviously. Uh, you're gonna insert that later, but I did find that with Decoville light, I don't need to slip it in later. I can just adhere it now and sew it all together. So I already have my Decoville light strips on here again. If you're using the same material as me, you probably don't even need to use Decoville Light. You could just leave it wax canvas, waterproof canvas. Then we have the bottom gusset, which is a bit bigger and a bit thicker. I have my wax canvas and my lining. And again, I have that stabilizer cut already adhered to the lining on the bottom, just like that. Pattern piece G is the zipper pocket overlay. I will cut the rectangle for the inside for the zipper later, uh, but this is just a fun little detail. It is completely optional. Pattern piece H is the trim for the slip pocket that goes in the lining of the bag. Next is pattern piece I. You're gonna have two of these. I am using the wax canvas. You could also use the same material from your strap if you like. Uh, this is just gonna be to hold the rectangle rings in place. Next up is pattern piece K. You're gonna have four cuts of this. I'm using all lining cuts. Uh, so no interfacing or anything is required. This is gonna be for the lining zipper pocket as well as the lining slip pocket. And finally, I have pattern piece L. This is gonna be two cuts of my Decoville Light or foam if that's what you're using. I have not adhered this to anything yet because this is gonna be adhered to the lining and I'm going to install my pockets and everything before I add this to the lining. Again, it, it's probably optional to be completely honest. And the last bit is going to be the binding. I like to use a one inch strip of waterproof canvas for this. You're gonna have two cuts of this. Each needs to be about a yard, so 36 inches. You can see I just did width of fabric 
of my waterproof canvas so I have a nice long cut, but I will cut this in half before we stitch it on. Uh, you can also use double fold bias if you'd like that you can buy from the store. There's also this new option I just saw from Weft and Warp which is really cool and it's just like pre-made beautiful binding. I believe this is a water resistant Oxford I want to say, uh, but you don't have to worry about fraying or anything and you don't have to cut it yourself. It's just a nice roll. You just add it to your bag. It looks great. So this is also an option. So before we get started, one of the first things you wanna do is mark the midpoint on the top and bottom of most of your pieces. Uh, we're gonna start with the main panels, the slip exterior pocket, and then the cargo pocket uh, lining as well as exterior materials. Just mark the midpoint on the top and the bottom of all these. Once you have those marked, you can go ahead and set it to the side. So now we're gonna prep our strap tabs. So grab one of your strap tabs and you can just mark the middle line. Um, with wax canvas, you can easily just fold it and you can see it'll leave a nice little crease like that. And then you're gonna take one of the edges that's parallel and run it wrong sides together. If you're using wax canvas, there's not usually a right and wrong side. And we're gonna do that with the other side as well. There we go. So now the front looks nice and flat like this, and then the back has the seams. Set that to the side and go ahead and repeat that with your other strap tab. And now we're gonna take both of these to the sewing machine and we're just gonna top stitch along both of the folded long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have these top stitch, take the back side so that has the raw edges there and you're gonna wrap that around one of the long straight edges of your rectangle ring just like that. So don't wrap it around the shorter one, <laughs> don't smush it. It's gotta be the longer one. You can grab some clips and just clip the strap tab around it just like that. And like I said, if you didn't wanna create your own little tabs here, you could use the webbing from your strap. That's another option. And now let's just top stitch along the bottom raw edges where we have the clips at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then the last step is to measure half of an inch up from this bottom raw edge. And if you're using wax canvas, you can use something like a stiletto, otherwise use a vinyl marker or an air racing marker. And we're just gonna mark a line. So I'll show you just like that. See a nice, nice line. We'll use that later when we attach this. So once you've done that for both of them, you can set these to the side. So now we're gonna work on the strap. So make sure you have your strap ends if you wanna use them and then cut down your strap to whatever length you like. Like I said, I like my straps to be anywhere between 56 and 60 inches long. It is an adjustable strap, it's just not a removable strap. And if you're using a strap that is made of plastic fibers, uh, you can go ahead and burn down the edges of these. So you can see once you tap it with your lighter, they just kind of melt in on themselves. They suck in and melt in, uh, and that just seals it so you don't have to worry about it fraying later. Now we're gonna take one edge of our strap and we're gonna take this little accent piece here. Again, this is optional, you don't have to do it, and just wrap it around. And it's such a small piece, you can just kind of look from the top like this and make sure that both raw edges line up in the same spot. And then grab some clips to clip it in place. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along the bottom raw edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, the biggest thing here is I wanna make sure I catch the bottom as well as the top when I top stitch this down. Once you have that top stitch, if you have any like little thread tails, you can take a lighter and just gently boop them. And just like with the raw edges of the strap, they'll just melt in on themselves. So now we're gonna grab our strap slider and I have my tabletop rivet press today and we'll use a couple of rivets, just two. And we're going to take our strap end that we top stitched this onto and we're going to insert it from the bottom of the slider up over the middle bar and then back over. And you just wanna leave, I mean, let's see, about an inch. You can have it come over about an inch less if you feel like you don't need that much. You just need enough room to put the rivets or to sew this down if that's what you prefer. So I'm going to grab my other press that has a hole punch on it and I'm gonna mark this out first. Let's see, I like to space them. I'm gonna space them about half of an inch in from each edge. So I'm gonna measure half of an inch in from the left, half of an inch in or so from maybe three eighths of an inch. And I just kinda eyeball it. You just wanna space out your rivets evenly and two are gonna be useful for this size. And the nice thing about an air racing marker is like right now I'm looking at it and I made my dots a little lower than I want them to be, but I can punch a hole higher than that and those dots will disappear over time. So now I'm just punching holes where I marked and then I'll grab my rivets and push them through those holes. So I push the stem through and then I take the cap and insert the cap on the other side. It does not matter which side you put the stem through and which side you put the cap on, it looks the same either way. Okay, once those are in there, I'm just gonna set them with my other rivet press using the appropriate die. 
All right, so now I have one end taken care of. For the remaining strap end, all I'm gonna do is top stitch down this little cork piece, just like I did on the other side. So I'm just gonna wrap this around, look from the side, look from above, and make sure they're lining up, because I need to make sure I catch the side I can't see when I'm top stitching along the side that I can see. So I'm gonna go top stitch along the raw edges here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then once again, if you have any of these little pokey tails hanging out, we're just gonna burn them down or melt them. I always say burn them, I mean melt them. You're not burning anything, just making it look nice. There we go. So you can set the strap to the side now. So now let's work on the cargo pocket. If you haven't already, make sure you apply your Decoville light to the back of the flap on the lining side. And we're gonna find the center of the bottom edge. So the bottom edge has this curved bit here. Let's go ahead and find that center. I like to do that by just folding it in half. And then I grab some scissors and just make a teeny tiny clip right there. And that way I have it marked easily to see. Now we're gonna measure one and one eighth up from this bottom edge and mark a dot. And again, this is going to be centered. Now grab one of the washers if you're using these. If you're using the rivet, type of magnetic snap, then you don't have to do this step here. Um, you'll just insert it a little bit later. But if you're using the washers, grab a washer and the washer has a center hole and then two slits on either side of it. And you're just going to center the washer over that little dot you made and then mark in the slits, the vertical pieces, just like that. So grab a seam ripper and you're going to seam rip right along those slits, but do not extend past them only where you marked, just those two little tiny lines. There we go. And now take your exterior material and you're gonna lay your lining and exterior materials right sides together. Just line them up like that. And then clip together. We're gonna be focusing on the sides and the bottom. So the top is this straight edge. Again, we're always looking at our Decoville light because that really does show us what our flap is gonna look like. So I'm just gonna clip along the sides and the bottom so I don't forget that I'm not sewing along the top here. So now we're gonna sew these together at a half of an inch seam allowance, but really what you wanna do is just trace right along the stabilizer. So my needle is not going to go on the stabilizer at any point, it's gonna go just to the right of it. So just outside of it on the material, I'm gonna start all the way on the top on the straight edge, back stitch at the beginning and the end, so I'm just gonna go down the side, and so for these corners, again, I'm just gonna gently go around my Decoville light until I get to the other side. I just noticed that apparently I cut my exterior a little bit shorter than my lining. Whoops. Luckily I lined everything up at the top edge instead of the bottom edge, so it was okay. Uh, but make sure you pay attention to that. Make sure they're all lined up appropriately. Okay, so now I'm gonna start about halfway through the side, and I'm just gonna trim around this corner and also the bottom. Let's say I'm leaving under a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm just gonna go up to the other side as well like that. And if you'd like, you can use pinking shears here, or you can just kind of make little tiny slits into the seam, making sure you're not cutting the thread, the stitches at any point. But this just helps those rounded corners kind of poke out nicely. So now let's turn this out, right side out, through that top straight edge opening. So I like to push it out as much as I can with my fingers, but I don't have the strongest nails, so once I get it most of the way, I get my turning tool and I'll start with the most blunt side and just kind of just kind of run it along the seam. You'll see it'll push it out really nicely. I love the way wax canvas has like a really worn look to it right away. It's so nice. So now I'm going to take some clips and I'm just going to take the time to kind of roll out the edges looking from the exterior side to make sure it looks the way I want it to look. Sometimes these seams will roll so the lining is really rolled up on the edges and if that's not how you want it to look, then just take the time now to kind of re-roll it, get it in the shape you want it. Okay, so now we're gonna top stitch along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, once again, leaving this top edge open. So now grab the male magnetic snap and on the lining side, we're going to push the prongs through those slits that we already have, just like that. And then grab one of your washers. Since I already have Decoville light on the back of my lining, I don't need to add any fusible fleece between the washer and the material. Uh, you'll see later I will, but since I already have some stabilizer there, that's going to help protect the material from, from ripping or anything. So I'm gonna take my washer, 
looking inside and I'm just going to insert it over those prongs. I don't know if you can see, but I have it inserted in there and now I'm just going to use my thumbs to push down the prongs to flatten them out. And then the final step I like to make, especially since I'm using wax canvas, I don't know if you can tell, but you, you can see, you see that? Those are the prongs. Over time, the wax canvas will definitely show that. So I wanna protect my wax canvas by grabbing a little bit of fusible fleece, just a little rectangle, and then I have my Beacon 3-in-1 glue, and then I am just going to add some glue to the back of my fusible fleece, and then I'm going to open up my little flap here, and I'm gonna have glue side go down along the metal. So the glue is going to go against the metal prongs. I do my best to get it all the way down there, flattened out, and that will just help protect my wax canvas over time. There we go. And just give that a moment to dry. So there we go. If you'd like, you can go ahead and top stitch along this top edge here, or you can just leave it. Keep hold of the female end, and we'll attach that in just a moment. So now grab your exterior cargo pocket, and on the top edge, where we have the center mark, we're gonna measure down one inch, and we're just going to mark a dot one inch down and centered. Next, grab one of your remaining washers, and center the hole over that dot you marked, and then mark placement for those slits, so the prongs will go through that, and then grab your seam ripper, and seam rip right along those slits. So now I'm gonna grab a bigger ruler here and a chalk marker, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure two inches away from the center mark, and I'm gonna use my chalk marker to mark a line going straight down. I'm gonna do two inches to the left and also two inches to the right. I'm gonna do a second line two and three quarters inches from the middle mark. So I'm gonna have one that's two inches away, mark a line, and then another one that's two and three quarters of an inch and mark a line. I'm gonna do this both on the left side and the right side. All right, you can probably not see it at all, um, which is, I, I don't want it to be that visible. You could also use an air erasing marker. You know what, I will go over it with an air erasing marker so you can see it better. All right, maybe you can see that a little bit better. So I have my two inch marks, and then I have my two and three quarter inch marks. At the two inch line, we're gonna fold our cargo pocket wrong sides together, and we're gonna fold right along that line. So that's why I like to do the whole line. I'm just gonna add some clips here. There we go. And I'm just, again, I'm just folding right on that two inch mark all the way down. So now on this folded clipped edge, I'm going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we got the left side done. We're gonna do the same thing on the right side, but again, not the two and three quarter inch, the two inch mark. So it's the inner mark here. Fold it wrong sides together, just like that, and then clip. You could also press this with an iron if you prefer instead of clipping it. Totally your choice. Okay, now just make sure you move the other raw edge out of the way, and we're gonna go top stitch along this line now at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now on the two and three quarter inch marks, so the two outer marks that are still left, we're gonna fold the material right sides together. And I know that's a little bit trickier because now you can't really see where you marked that line, uh, but just, just fold it on the edges and that will help you. So there it is, fold it on the edges like this, and then you can kind of straighten it out just like that. If it's a little off, it's gonna be fine. So again, we're folding it right sides together, just like that. Now we're gonna top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We are top stitching on the back side of the material. After you top stitch it, you can see when you fold it right side out, see how it just creates this nice little, this little like pleat here? It's very nice. And the top stitching just helps keep it together because sometimes we do pockets like this and we just kind of like fold it and just hang on for dear life and hope that when we stitch the top and the bottom, it'll work. Uh, by top stitching it, you don't have to do that. You know it's gonna be right. So we're gonna do the same thing on the remaining two and three quarter inch mark. Fold your material right sides together. Again, it's always just easiest to look at the sides. So I clip both sides. Once again, you can use an iron for this. And then I'm just gonna kind of press it down in between my clips, making sure everything is still lined up. And now let's top stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, this is how your pocket should look. So cute. So once you have it all pressed down nice, you can baste along the top and the bottom to just hold this pleat in place. All right, so the exterior part of the pocket is done. Let's work on the lining part. 
The lining part is a similar process, just a little bit different on the uh, placement and where we fold. So make sure you're looking at the right side of your lining pocket. And this time we're going to measure one and one eighth of an inch to the right and the left, and then one and seven eighths of an inch to the right and the left. So from the center, one and one eighth, one and seven eighths, both sides. So this time we're gonna start with the outermost edges on the one and seven eighths inch lines, the furthest ones. We're gonna fold the material wrong sides together. Just like before, you can press this or you can fold along that edge and then clip. So now let's top stitch along that clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you've done that on one side, repeat that on the other side, again, the furthest, the furthest line, just folding it wrong sides together. And now let's top stitch along this clipped edge, again, making sure you take the other side out of the way so you don't stitch over it on accident. Now on the innermost edge, the one and one eighth, we're gonna fold those ones right sides together. So just like on the other side, I'm gonna look at the edge of my material and just kind of clip on the top and bottom first, like that. And then I'll just press with my fingers in between and add some clips. Now I'm gonna to top stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This time we are top stitching on the back side of the lining. So you can see when you open it up, it pleats in. Like the, this one here, see how it pleats out? This one pleats in. Um, so now we're gonna do the same thing on the left side here, just folding the material right sides together. So again, I do the edges, cause that's what I can see. And then I just kind of stretch them and press in between the clips and then add a few more clips. And now we'll top stitch along that edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now you see we have these little folders. I keep saying pleats. I hope I'm using that term correctly. Uh, in case not, I apologize. But we have these folds going in towards the center. Let's once again just baste along the top and the bottom just to hold this together. So the reason you do the lining in opposite direction as the exterior, so when you put these right sides together, you don't have really bulky seams overlapping one another. Because if we did them the same way, we would have some very thick seams here. Uh, and this way, the folded seams on the lining are tucked inside the folded seams on the exterior, and it's just a little bit easier. It's still a little bit bulky because you are folding fabric, and especially if you used vinyl or something like that for your exterior, that's gonna be bulky. So if you need to increase your needle, go ahead and do that. But you can see now I'm just lining up my two pieces, my lining and my exterior right sides together, and I'm clipping along the top edge. Make sure if you have a directional print, you check. So now let's sew along this top clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now lift up the lining so it's out of the way, and then grab the female end of your magnetic snap. And then also let's now grab a scrap of fusible fleece. So I'm just cutting off a small square here and I'm gonna use the washer for my magnet to mark those same slits that I marked on my material already. And then I'll grab my seam ripper and rip right along those slits. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna take our female end of the washer and we're gonna insert it through the right side of the exterior. We already have those holes cut open with our seam ripper. And let's flip this over. And then we're gonna take our scrap piece of whatever. It can be a scrap piece of material, it can be a scrap piece of Decoville Light, fusible fleece, whatever you want it to be. Just something to add a little bit more support to this quilt cotton. So as we use this over time, it's not always just pulling at the material. And then I'm gonna take my washer and put that over the prongs and push down and apart as flat as I can get it. Then I'll grab another scrap here of fusible fleece just big enough to cover this back. Let's see, that'll work. And then I have my beacon three in one glue. And I'm just going to add some glue to the back of my fusible fleece. Fusible fleece is fusible, so you could just iron this on, but I find this is just quicker and easier. So there we go. So I just glued this over those prongs. And now I don't have to worry about that rubbing against the lining and causing any sort of holes. And so I just remembered I was supposed to top stitch the top of this edge before I did that. So I'll make a note to top stitch first, but um, you should be okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to just fold the top edge that we already sewed. So I'm gonna press the waterproof canvas away like this first, and then I'll fold it down and press both of these with my fingers, or you can get an iron. 
And then I'm gonna add some clips along this top edge here to get it to look the way I want it to look. And see, so you're supposed to install the magnetic snap after this step because it's easier to top stitch this if you don't have this piece of metal in your way. It can still be done, it's just kind of a pain. So I think I'll actually use a zipper foot here to top stitch just so I don't have to worry about losing control of my sewing machine. But we're gonna top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now make sure the sides and the bottom are all lined up. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, it's okay. You can see my exterior over here is a little bit wider than my lining, that's fine. But I am gonna add some clips just to hold it together. Now I'm just gonna baste along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, that looks great. So now grab one of your main panels and you're gonna mark a line that's two and three eighths of an inch down from this top edge, just all the way across. I'm gonna use a stiletto to do that because it doesn't need to be a permanent line, just a temporary line. So now grab your pocket and lay it right side up on the right side of your exterior main panel and centered. So this is where those midpoints on the bottom of your pocket and the bottom of the exterior are gonna come in handy. It should line up with that line. Um, yeah, it should line up with that line. So now you're gonna probably have some overhang on the sides, that's fine. Just work on clipping um, a little bit on the bottom first. There we go. So let's start with the right side. We're going to pull up our pocket. So we're not gonna just let it overhang and then trim it down. We're gonna pull up our pocket so that the top right corner matches up with the edge of our exterior and also that line we marked. Here we go. So it, this does create a bit of a poof, like a little, little bubble, which is what we want. So I'm just gonna go down the side as much as I can, clipping it lined up just like that. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the left side. I'm gonna kind of pull up my material and then line up the top left corner with the edge and then also with that line. There we go, and I'll add some clips to hold it in place. And I'm lining, I mean, as much as the side as I can. Eventually, it cannot keep lining up like this. It will have to overhang, and that's fine. You just want it mostly lined up. So you see now, if you look from the top, I have a bit of a hill, which is what we want. So now let's flip this over. And the corners, of course, are gonna overhang because we have rounded corners on our main panel and a rectangle on our other panel. So just try to get this as flat as you can. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna focus on the back side of the main panel, and we're gonna baste along the side and the bottom where the clips are at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. As you're going around, just kind of keep smooshing the pocket out of the way. You don't want it to start, you know, peeking out the side. You wanna smoosh it out and get this as lined up as you can on the sides and the bottom. So now when we flip this over, we can just take some scissors and trim down our pocket so that it's the same size as our main panel. There we go. Trim down the sides a little bit. All right, let's flip it over. Looking good, nice and poofy. That poof is gonna go down once we turn this out. There is a good amount of pull and rounding on the bag once we flip it all out, and so this does go down significantly. It becomes pretty flat. But now we wanna grab our flap, and let's just attach them by the magnetic snap line up the edge. If you haven't marked a midpoint, you might wanna do that. I'm gonna fold my flap in half so I can find the midpoint on the top. With wax canvas, all I have to do is really just pinch it. Now I have it. So line up the midpoint. Here we go, that's looking great. So I'm just going to base this top edge down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So at this point you might say like, well, if I lay everything down flat, the magnetic snaps don't match up. They're not supposed to. When they snap together, there should be a bit of a poof. See, how cute is that? These colors look good, don't they? And I'm telling you, I'm using that teal colored thread and it's almost invisible. Like it's just not that noticeable, especially on this color down here because it blends with everything so nicely. So you can go ahead and put this to the side. So now let's do the slip pocket for the exterior. Take your lining panel for the exterior slip pocket and measure down one inch and mark a dot that is centered. Grab your remaining washers and magnetic snaps. And just like before, we're gonna use our washers to help us mark placement for our snaps. So I'm just gonna take my washer and center it over that dot and then mark the little ovals for the slits like that. 
And then once again, I'll have my seam ripper and I will just rip right along where I marked, no further than that. For this one, I'm also gonna get a scrap piece of fusible fleece to help with the installation since I don't have any interfacing or stabilizer on the back of this lining cut. So I'm just going to mark the same slits and use my seam ripper to prep my scrap. Okay, so just like before, we're gonna leave this off and we're gonna attach it later. So now take your lining and your exterior and lay them right sides together and we're working on the top edge. So if you have a directional print, it's the top edge of the exterior top edge of the lining and just line them up and let's clip those together. So now let's sew along this top edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So now we're going to flip our fabric so that it's wrong sides together. So I always like to flip up either of the panels one by one. So I flip up one and then finger press it and then I'll flip the other one down and get it to look the way I want it to look. Again, it's usually best to look from the exterior side. Make sure you line it all up so you can see it starts to twist pretty easily. So I'm just going to line up the bottom edges and clip together. And now I'm gonna use my clips to clip along this top edge just so it stays the way I want it to stay. You could also use an iron here and iron it. So now let's top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once that's top stitched, let's go back to the lining side and grab the male end of your magnetic snap. And from the right side of the lining, push the prongs in towards the back, let's flip it over. I'm gonna grab my scrap of fusible fleece to help protect the lining. And then I will grab my washer and I will cover the back and pull open the prongs. There we go. And then I'm gonna grab another piece of fusible fleece. Again, this can be anything, it could be deck of the light, it could just be another piece of fabric and I'm gonna add some glue to the back of it, and then I'll glue this over those prongs. There we go. Push down, flip it down. Looking adorable, isn't it? All right, once that snap is installed, go ahead and base down the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now grab your back bane panel and lay it right side up, and then take your slip pocket and lay it right side up and match up those midpoint marks on the bottom edge here. And I like to clip at the center and then just make sure the whole bottom edge is straight and clip it together just along the bottom. And now this is especially easy if you're using wax canvas, but what I'm gonna do is just kind of push where my snap is. And when I lift this up, I have a little dot here and that's exactly where I need to install the female end. So then I'm going to grab my washer and center that over that dot. And then I will mark the slits for my prongs and then I will Grab my seam ripper and gently cut right along those slits that I marked. There we go. Then grab the female end of your magnetic snap and it should be installed through the right side. So when you close it, just like that, nice and easy. So let's flip it over. Once again, I'm gonna use my handy dandy fusible fleece and I'm just cutting a couple of scraps. One to help beef up the material while I'm installing the magnetic snap and the other one to just cover the prongs. So I'll use my washer to mark those same placement marks for the prongs and I will cut those with my seam ripper. So now I can put my fusible fleece over the prongs and then I'll put my washer over that and then spread open the prongs and then grab my glue and my remaining piece of fusible fleece scrap, add the glue to the back and just glue this over those metal prongs. Okay, so now when I flip this over and snap it shut, there we go. How sweet is that? So once again, you can mark two and three eighths of an inch down from the top edge of your main panel. And we already have the bottom clipped. We're gonna take the top right corner and we're gonna match it up with that mark and also the edge of our main panel. And then we're just gonna try to keep it lined up with the edge as far down as we can. If it starts to bubble up and kind of move around the bottom edge, then, then stop. Just as much as you can. I'm going to repeat that with the other side, matching up the top left corner of my pocket with that line and also the edge of my material and clip together. So I'm going to flip this over and just like before, I'm going to work from the back side and we're going to base this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once that's basted down, go ahead and trim down your pocket so that the edges match up with the edges of the front panel. And there you go, your back panel is now done. 
So now we're gonna work on the zipper and the gusset. So I have my gusset zipper panels, I have my bottom gusset panel, and I have my zipper, and my zipper pulls. Um, when it comes to the zipper tape, you want it to be at least 16 inches long. It's okay if it's a little bit longer. I'm going to insert my zipper pulls on either side of the tape so that they come together when they close. So I have one I inserted on the right side and now I'm going to insert the other one on the left side. There we go. So you see when they pull apart, they open up. When they come together, they close. You could just put one zipper pull on here. That's fine too. It's not a huge bag, but I do like having the two zipper pulls. I think it's nice. So before we get started, let's prep everything. Uh, first, I'm going to melt down the edges of my zipper tape just because zipper tape does like to fray and I don't need any more headaches. I'm gonna move my pulls to one side. And what we wanna do now is we wanna mark the midpoints on everything. We wanna mark the midpoint on the zipper tape. We wanna mark the midpoint on both gussets, zipper panels, linings, all of it. So the midpoint on the long edges of everything. So you can use whatever tool you wanna use for that. You can mark it with a pen. You can use scissors. I have seen this suggested a lot if you are using scissors on your zipper tape like I am. You see we just fold it and then clip it with the scissors, but like I just said, zipper tape likes to fray. And I've seen some people say that over time that seems to fray through the seams, so then just grab a lighter and melt where you marked so that it doesn't do that. Okay, once you have everything marked, you're ready to go. I know that takes extra time, but it, it does actually save time later. So grab one of your exterior zipper gusset panels and lay it right side up, and then take your zipper tape and lay your zipper tape right side down and match up those midpoint marks and clip together. And now I'm gonna baste these together along the clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab one of your lining zipper gusset panels and lay it right side down on the back side of your zipper. Once again, use those midpoint marks to line it up first and then line it up out towards the edges. And now let's sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once these are sewn together, you're going to press the lining and the exteriors wrong sides together. So you have a nice idea of what it looks like. And I'm going to clip along the sides and the long raw edges to hold it in place. So it can be a little difficult to get it to lay the way you want. So that's why it's, it's easier if you do this. I do the sides and then I grab those midpoints and I clip these together and then I can kind of press it down on both sides and get them lined up. And then use clips here to get it all squared away. Okay, so now we're gonna top stitch by the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm also going to base down the sides and the long edge because I already attached my Decoville light. If you're using foam, you're going to leave the long edge open because you'll insert that later. But if you're like me and you're using Decaville Light and you've already attached it, or you're not using any interfacing or stabilizer, um, then you can just base down the long edge as well. But everything at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so you see that's what one side looks like. And now we just need to repeat that with the other side. So we're gonna do the same thing. Take a exterior piece and lay it right side up. This is one of your zipper gusset panels. Take your whole unit and lay it so that the zipper is right side down and match up the midpoint marks with the zipper tape and the zipper gusset and clip together. And now let's go baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now lay your zipper tape wrong side up and grab your remaining lining zipper panel. And we're gonna lay that right side down on the back of the zipper. And once again, line up with the midpoint marks and then clip out towards the ends. And now let's sew along that clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Now let's flip the lining side back, just give it a good press, and then flip over to the front. Same thing, give it a decent press. I always like to just press it with my fingers. There we go. And now to help, I'm going to find the midpoints on the two raw edges and clip them. So our zipper panels are now wrong sides together. And I'll clip them over here on the sides as well. Okay, and then we'll just push down like that. And again, since I already adhered my Decoville light, I don't need to leave an opening for foam or anything later. I am just going to top stitch along the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, and then also baste along the sides and the long edge also at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
Once you have this all ready to go, and if you had to insert your foam, go ahead and do that. Insert your foam and baste around the edges. Um, now grab your strap connectors, lay your zipper gusset right side up, take your strap connectors, make sure you can see that half inch line we marked, remember? And you're gonna line up the half inch mark line with the raw edge of the zipper gusset. So this is going to overextend the edge of the zipper gusset and it needs to be centered over the zipper tape. So there we go, it's gonna overextend a bit. I'm just gonna use clips to hold it in place. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. That half of an inch mark is what I line up with the raw edge so that the tab goes off. So now let's go baste these tabs down. Uh, I'm gonna baste them in an eighth of an inch in from the zipper panel, so not the edge of the tabs, the edge of the zipper panel. All right, so the zipper part is done. Now we're just gonna attach it to the bottom part. So go ahead and check and make sure these are about the same widths. They look good. If they're just a little bit off, I don't worry about it. So we're going to take the zipper gusset and lay it right side up. Make sure your rectangle rings are going in towards the center and then grab your bottom exterior gusset and lay it right side down. Let's start over here on the right side. Just match up the short edges and clip the short edges together. And now let's just baste this together at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now let's flip this over so we're looking at the lining side and then grab the lining bottom gusset panel and lay it right side down and match it up with that same edge that we just attached the exterior side to and clip together. So now you can sew anywhere between a 3 8 inch and a quarter inch seam allowance. The pattern does suggest that if you're using thicker material, you might want to use a quarter inch seam allowance. So it's a little bit easier to attach this to the main panel later. Um, I, I just go right in between them. I look at my 3 8 inch and my quarter inch mark and I just sew right in between them. So I'm going to do that on the short edge right here. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Now flip the lining and exterior wrong sides together. And just kind of pull them apart over here so that you have a nice straight line. There we go. I always like to add a little bit of clips along the edge just so I don't have to wrestle it too much. So now we're just gonna top stitch right below this seam on the base part of the gusset at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, one side done. We're just gonna repeat that with the other side. So again, flip those rectangle rings in. I'm just going to grab the exterior bottom gusset and I'm gonna line it up with this other raw edge over here from my zipper gusset and clip right sides together. And now I'll just baste these together at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once that's basted, flip this over so you're looking at the lining side of the zipper and then you're going to flip that lining bottom gusset up, right sides together with the lining zipper gusset and match up those short edges. And now once again, I'm just gonna sew this between a quarter and a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Thicker material, go more towards a quarter inch. Thinner material, go to more towards 3 8 of an inch. Now flip this so the lining and the exterior are wrong sides together. To flip the whole thing out this time. There we go. Hopefully nothing is twisted. So what we're focused on is just pulling and flattening out the seam we just sewed. So just work on getting that as flat as possible. I'm going to add a couple clips here. All right, and once again, we're going to top stitch just below the seam on the bottom gusset part at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So since I already attached my Decoville light to my lining, I am going to clip both long edges of this bottom gusset together and baste them together. So it's always good to use those midpoint marks to help you. So just go around the long edges, clipping these raw edges together. If you're using foam as your stabilizer, then you're only going to clip one edge. Um, otherwise, if you're ready, you can clip both edges. All right, now I'm gonna go around and baste both of these long edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, once it's all basted together, find the midpoint marks on the top zipper gusset and also on the bottom gusset. I'm just going to clip these so that I don't have to worry about finding them again. There we go. And then you're just going to smoosh this down so it's nice and flat. And we wanna mark right where these folds are. So when we flatten this out, 
These are our other midpoint marks and those are gonna be helpful for us when we attach this to the bag. So I'm just going to snip right where those marks are. There we go. So now we have all these marks made. The gusset is done. Let's put it to the side. So next up is the lining slip pocket. So take two of your lining pockets. So flip both of these over so you're looking at the wrong side and then measure one inch up from each bottom edge and mark a line. Once you have that marked, you can just take your material and fold it wrong sides together so the raw edge is meeting that marked line. You can press this with an iron. I like to just add a couple clips to it. We don't need to worry about this until later, but clips should be fine. So do this for both of them. So now take both of your pockets and lay them right sides together and make sure the bottom clipped edges or pressed edges are on the same side. And now we're specifically looking at the sides. So we lay these right sides together and let's clip along both sides all the way down. So now we're gonna sew the sides only at a quarter inch seam allowance, backstitch at the beginning and the end. Now let's turn this right side out. You can press it with an iron if you like. And then just make sure that bottom folded edge, you refold it if it came unfolded. I'm gonna clip it together, but you could also use some double-sided tape here to hold it shut. And then just make sure you press out the sides. Again, ironing is going to be the easiest thing to do here, but I like to use clips because I'm lazy. Okay, so now we have the sides and the bottom, everything is nice and flat, and then we have the raw edge up top. What I'm gonna do real quick is measure halfway up my little trim, so that's just half of an inch up, and I'm going to mark a line just like that. I'm also gonna grab some double-sided tape here just for one edge, so I'm not lining it up right on the raw edge over here, but close to it. Okay, so I'm gonna take the paper off. Now I'm gonna take my pocket, and I'm going to lay it on top of that tape, and I'm gonna have my raw edge of my pocket get very close to that center mark, but not actually touch it. And the reason for that is because when we fold this, it, it, the, the fabric takes up bulk. So when I fold this over, by making sure I'm not covering that center mark, my back and front will meet up. So now I'm going to use clips for the rest of it. It's a really cute little detail. I like this. So now we're gonna top stitch along the bottom raw edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you check that everything is lined up because you need to catch the top and the bottom edge when you do this. So if you have any thread poking out off the edge, you can just melt it real quick. Always a good step to take. Makes it look nice, there you go. Now grab one of your lining main panels and lay it right side up. And we're gonna take our slip pocket and center it on our lining panel and lay it so it's one inch up from the bottom edge. So to help with that, use a chalk marker to measure one inch up from that edge. And then I'm gonna fold the bottom edge in half, just like this, and use a air racing marker to mark the midpoint. And then I can lay this over, match up midpoints, match it up with that one inch edge. There we go. And the, the pattern suggests folding this over and clipping it together to help hold it in place. You can do that. Uh, you could also use tape here, which I like to use. So I have this Kimberbell tape that works really well with this material. So I'll just stick it all over the place. And if you need to sew over it, you can. All right, <laughs> it's a little bit of a mess, but we're going to top stitch along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch as you go over the beginning and the end up here at the top. All right, one detail they do here that I really like is um, to add a couple little rivets to this pocket. I think that's cute, and especially with a pocket like this, you know, it is pretty, it's pretty thick up top and the more you use it, the more likely these threads are gonna pop out. So the rivets just help. So I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm just gonna punch a hole just next to the stitching. I'm not going to punch a hole through the stitching. So you see, it's just next to it. I'm not, I'm not measuring or anything, just eyeballing. And let's grab a couple of rivets. And then I grab my press and I will press these together. All right, there you go. And if you have a little tag, let's put a tag on here actually, let's do it. 
These little sewing tags are really fun to add. So you're just gonna add it to the right side of the pocket, about the same height as the pocket, maybe a little bit above it. And now let's base this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Isn't that fun, this little tag, it says, you look really pretty today. That's a fun little reminder. All right, you can set this to the side. So the final, final piece of this is making the zip pocket on the other side of the lining, which is really cute, really fun. You should try it. So uh, first let's measure one and a half inches down from the top edge of our remaining lining panel. Here we go, we're just gonna leave that for later. So make sure you cut your zipper down and add your zipper pull and then take one of the pockets and lay the pocket panel right side up. And then take the zipper and lay it on top of that pocket panel, also right side up. And when the zipper closes, it should be going towards the left. And let's clip these together. And now sew these together along that clipped edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. So it's just, just under a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that sewn on, you're gonna take your remaining lining pocket piece and lay that right side up. And then just repeat this. You're gonna take your zipper once again, lay your zipper right side up and line it up on the top edge of the remaining lining piece and clip together. Should be the exact same size. And once again, let's sew these together at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. All right, and if you haven't already, let's just um, take a lighter to the edge of the zipper tape because it's already fraying quite a bit on me. And it, it just makes it easier to work with. There you go, perfect. So now let's pull the lining panels apart gently. You don't need to like separate your zipper or anything like that. But what we wanna do is we wanna just push down these raw edges of the zipper tape against their associated lining panels. And once you have it pushed down, we're gonna to top stitch at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance to flatten it against that lining panel. So you're gonna do this for both sides. All right, so now we are ready to install this to our main panel. So we're gonna skip ahead because we are not using the zipper facing. We're gonna use the really cool overlay. So what we wanna do on the back of this, since I'm using a number five zipper, I wanna make a five inch by half of an inch rectangle centered on the back of this. So what I'm gonna do is just fold this in half, take my air racing marker and mark the midpoints. And then I'm gonna fold this in half again, matching up those midpoints to mark the center. There we go. So I have the very center of the facing marked here. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna line it up on the quarter inch mark so I can mark two and a half inches to the right and two and a half inches to the left and a quarter inch above and a quarter inch below to give me my rectangle. So you can see I marked one long line and one of the short lines and then all I have to do is match this up half of an inch and five inches to mark my full rectangle. Okay, so we have our rectangle marked. Now we need to cut it out. So to do that, I like to cut in the center first and I'm going to just kind of cut along the middle and then as I go along the center, I'm gonna cut out towards the corners. So I'm gonna do this for both corners. There we go, so you can see I have like a little triangle and an opening. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, cut along the center and then cut out towards the corners. And then I can just kind of pull back these flaps and trim down along the straight edges. You could also use an X-Acto knife here if that's easier for you. All right, there we go, a nice little opening and you can see at some point this is just gonna go over that. It's gonna be adorable. So now, Make sure the top edge of the overlay, the center is marked. We marked it on the back, but let's also mark it on the front. And then you can also use this line and the midpoint to find the midpoint on this line. There we go. So now I have the midpoint for the whole panel marked right here on my white line. And we're gonna match up the midpoint on our facing with the midpoint on that line. And we're gonna install it just like this. So this is where some tape is gonna be handy. Let's flip over our overlay and let's just add some double-sided tape along the two long edges. You could also do the short edges if you'd like, but I find the long edges are good enough. So I'm gonna remove the paper from the top edge first and get this lined up. There we go, line it up and press it down. And then I'll remove the paper from the bottom and then press that down as well, perfect. Now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch around the outside of this overlay. So not the rectangle, leave the rectangle alone. We're just gonna to top stitch along the outside of the overlay at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we have this stitched on and I just realized I forgot to add my bag tag to the exterior of this bag. So instead, I'm going to add it here underneath 
the facing. And so I just wanted to try out this little tool here because this way I can get it nice and straight. So I can line up my little tool with the grid marks and then I'll grab an air erasing marker and I'll push that into the little holes. There we go. And so when I lift that up, I have these four little dots here. And now I'll grab some double-sided tape and add it to the back of my tag. And my tags and this tool all come from the Heartwood and Hide. So I'm going to remove the paper from the back and I'm gonna use those four dots for my corner points. Oh yeah, that's super easy. And now it's straight. Huh, well I like that. So now I'm gonna to top stitch along all four edges of my bag tag. Okay, so that's a good place for the tag. So now back to this. We're gonna flip this over and we're gonna take our scissors and I can kind of lift it up, you see? I can see my opening here. I'm gonna cut into the lining and then push my scissors in there and without cutting that facing, if you need to, put your finger underneath it so you don't accidentally cut it. I'm gonna just cut a hole behind the facing so that you can't see the lining in this rectangle anymore. So this doesn't have to look good because no one's gonna see it. Okay, and if you have any areas like this where it's still a little bit overhanging, just go in there and trim it down. You just don't wanna see any of the lining peeking through. So on the back, it looks like a mess, but on the front, it looks great. Now grab your zipper panel, and when the zipper closing towards the left, lay it right side up, and then grab some double-sided tape, and put the double-sided tape on the very edge of the zipper tape. Do this for the top and the bottom. So I like to do this one at a time. So I'm gonna take the paper off of the top double-sided tape, and then I have my unit laying right side up, my zipper tape right side up, and then I'll take my lining, that has the facing and I'm going to lay it over it and I'm going to center it on the sides and also center it through that rectangle. There we go. You can go ahead and pull that zipper pull into the window and you can just readjust as you need to. The nice thing about that tape, it's not super sticky so you can lift it up and readjust. There we go. So I've got the top done. I'm gonna lift up my lining panel, take the paper off the bottom strip of tape and then just push it down. All right, there we go. So now we can just top stitch along the rectangle on the inside of the facing at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so this is what it should look like now. The zipper is stitched in place. So now let's flip this over and you're gonna fold down the top pocket so that it's right sides together with the bottom pocket. The bottom pocket will extend quite a bit further than the top. That's okay. Let's clip these together along the sides. And then you can just pull away the lining main panel and then trim down the bottom panel so that they're the same length. And now with the lining main panel right side up, you're gonna pull it back and you're going to stitch down the sides and the bottom all the way to the top. And you'll sew these at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. And there you go, a pretty unique lining zip pocket. I think that looks fantastic. And it, it, I feel like it's easier even than using the zipper facing, in my opinion. So since I'm not doing the foam, I'm doing Decoville Light, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my Decoville Light to my panels. Um, honestly, this is completely optional. I don't think it's that noticeable if you don't add the Decoville Light, uh, especially if you're using the same material as me, but I will show you how to do it. So we're going to center our Decoville Light cut over the back of our lining. Doesn't have to be perfect, just mostly centered. I know it's a little bumpy, like this one has the zipper pull here. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of quilt cotton and I'm going to just section by section press the back of my Decovo light to my lining. It requires a good amount of heat to adhere properly, but I just like to do it in sections. I feel like that's more manageable. So I'm just gonna work my way up to the top until I get to that zipper. So once I get to that zipper part, what I can do is flip it right side up and I'm not gonna put my iron on the cork, but I can put it on the right side of the waterproof canvas just above the cork. 
to get it set in place. Okay. And then I can flip it back over and then just press it over the zipper as well. It won't be perfectly adhered right on the zipper tape, but I think that's okay. Okay, so there's one lining panel. I'm gonna repeat that with the other lining panel and the other one's a little bit easier. We've got the rivets, but you could have put the rivets on, I guess, after you did this step. I'm gonna do the same thing, just covering it up from the back and section by section, pressing it in place. So now we have both the lining panels and the gusset and both the exterior panels. All we have to do is put it together. So let's first build the two main panels. So the front main panel that has the flap is gonna be paired up with the slip pocket and the back panel that has the magnetic slip pocket is going to be paired up with the zipper pocket. So we're just going to take these and lay them wrong sides together and match up all of the edges and then clip together. Okay, so I have them both fully clipped together. If you're using foam, you're gonna leave one edge open because you're gonna insert the foam. Since I'm not doing that, I'm going to baste along all four edges of each of these at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. one two three it looks simple but it is the most challenging part so before we get it together make sure you have all four midpoints marked on each of these so remember we already did that on the gusset let's do it on the front and back panels too we have the midpoints on the top and the bottom but we also need the midpoints on the sides so match up the midpoints on the top and the bottom and fold it to help you get the midpoints on the sides do this for the front panel and the back panel so now grab your front panel that has the flap and then grab your gusset and fold your gusset so it's lining side out and then grab the top midpoint mark and match it up with the top midpoint mark on your front panel. And I like to clip right at the midpoint mark and then I clip around it as well because sometimes when you're kind of moving it's all around things get unclipped. So I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom midpoint marks matched up and clipped together and then we're going to do the same thing on the sides okay and now we're going to clip as much of the straight edge as we can so we're going to go around adding clips to these straight edges you'll find you really can't add that many because the curves are going to get us and as you do this i suggest you start working with it so that the main panel is lining side up and then the gusset is more like a wall standing up around the sides that's going to be easier. Okay, now let's work on the corners. For the corners, you're going to kind of tuck in the main panel like a bowl. And then you can add little clips into the gusset, but only into the gusset at about a quarter of an inch seam allowance into the edge. And you can make three or four on each corner, as many as you need. And once you make those clips, as you tuck this in, you can spread the gusset out and that's gonna help you get a smoother curve here. So I just add lots of clips. So I'm gonna do this for all four corners. Alrighty. Second hardest part. <laughs> the hardest part is the one after this. Um, it's tricky. So we're gonna sew this with the gusset lining side up, okay? I like to unzip the zipper. It might not matter to you. And we're gonna sew it at a scant 3 8 inch seam allowance, meaning it's just just barely less than 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you want to do 3 eighths, go ahead and do that. That's fine too. Um, but we're gonna sew around all the edges. Just be careful, use your stiletto at these corners and keep your scissors next to you because if you're just really struggling with the gusset pulling away while you're trying to sew it down, just cut some more slits and then move that gusset out. The key with all this is to just go slow, have patience, stop when you need to. If you even have to like, remove it from the machine and mess with it and then go back, just do that, just take your time. The more you do it, the easier it'll be, the better you'll get at it. I'm telling you, wax canvas makes this easier. If you're using vinyl or something, 
that can be a bit of a nightmare. Uh, wax canvas definitely helps, but I like to kind of turn it through. I have a couple areas, see, I have a couple areas where I feel like there's a good amount of puckering, but when I flip it out, I mean, it just, it just looks like a bag, you know? I mean, I, I notice it now. Will I notice it tomorrow? Probably not. Uh, but if there's any areas that's just really bugging you, uh, unpick it and redo it. You, you can always do that. You're never just like committed to your first draft, you know? You can always try again. All right, that's looking really good though. I'm so excited about these colors. Okay, so now we're gonna repeat that. So I think this is the hardest part just because you don't have as much freedom to push stuff out of the way. You're gonna be fighting the bag while you do this, uh, but it, it's definitely, definitely doable, obviously. So we're gonna lay the back panel right side up, take our gusset, lay it right side down. You can see we're already kind of fighting with this guy here, but take that remaining gusset side, line up the midpoint marks. And once again, I like to clip right at the midpoint marks and then also clip just on each side of it. So I'm gonna do this for all four of my midpoint marks. And once again, I'm going to clip as much of the straight edges as I can. I have the lining panel facing right side up. So I have a bowl situation here. All right, and then for the corners, once again, I'm just going to clip into the seam about a quarter of an inch. And I make uh, between three and five cuts. I mean, don't go too nuts with it. All right, let's do this again. This is tricky. You gotta really shove it down. I know, I know you love the structure and the way that that other panel we already sewed looks. You're so proud of it. I am too, but you gotta smush it out of the way. Do not be gentle with this, okay? Because now we need to focus on sewing this, again, at a scant 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. Go slow. We did it. <laughs> this side's looking nice. This side looks like it's been through something. <laughs> uh, you could have added the binding one by one. Um, I don't think it matters. I'm going to add the binding to both sides now. So I have my long binding strip here and I'm just going to cut it in half. So each binding strip is about 36 inches long. So I am going to attach them just one at a time. I like to always start the binding at the top. I feel like that's the least noticeable spot. Uh, make sure you have your binding so it's wrong side down, right side up. And all we do is just wrap it around that seam. And if you did it at a scant 3 8 inch seam allowance, it should cover the stitches just perfectly. I always find that the corners are a little tricky. Uh, whenever I'm sewing these corners originally, I think I, I go, I make them too big. So if you have that problem, you can always trim down the corners just a little bit. Just trim the seam allowance down so that you can cover the stitching, but um, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just gonna go around, wrapping this around the raw edge. So once you get to the end, I can trim this down a little bit. You want it to overlap by just a bit. Remove the clips from where it started and just keep it overlapped. There you go. And I don't fold it under or anything like that. You just, just wrap it around. It looks great. All right, so now we're gonna top stitch this in place, again, with the gusset side up. Um, you can do an eighth of an inch seam allowance, or if you're worried you're not gonna catch the bottom, uh, just stitch right down the center of this binding as you see it, and you'll catch both sides. Once you have it stitched on, just check the back and make sure you caught all the edges. If there's any areas where you're like, ah, I didn't catch it, I need to go over it again. You can do that. You can just go over it a second time. This is not that noticeable. You don't have to unpick it and redo it. So now we're just gonna repeat that with the other side. So I'm just gonna once again grab my binding and wrap it around. I like to start at the top. I'm just gonna wrap it around the seam all the way around. Sometimes people ask me about the corners. I, I don't, this isn't like a cut on the bias or anything. It's not stretching. When I wrap the binding around the corners, it does fold over itself. 
and get all wrinkly and crinkly, but that's okay. You don't, you don't see it. So once you have this all wrapped, we're gonna go stitch the binding on. Again, I'm going to be doing it with the gusset side up. Just go slow, and if you need to, just go right through the center of the binding, uh, and you'll catch both sides. Hardest parts are done. Guys, the bag's pretty much wrapped, but the bag is done. Uh, does your left arm hurt though? Cause mine does. So now we're going to turn this out gently. And you'll notice those corners are hard to sew, but they are pretty forgiving, especially with something like wax canvas. It don't have to be perfect. They're gonna look pretty dang perfect. I mean, this, this whole bag looks, look at that. I have goosebumps, guys. Oh man, doesn't this look so good? Doesn't this make you want to take a trip somewhere? That was the that was the vibe I was going for. Kind of like a fun adventure you can go on. Oh wow, this is so cute. So all we have to do now is attach the strap. So let's lay the bag with the flap right side up. And we're going to take the strap so that the bottom is facing up away from the top of the bag. We're gonna have it come down. And this is the edge that does not have the slider, obviously. Uh, we're gonna have it come down through that rectangle ring and then back up. Okay, so your straps are back sides together. And then this edge here that doesn't have anything attached is gonna go through the slider on the edge where it's folded over. It's gonna go up that side first and then over the middle bar and then back down around and then pull it through just like that. So your slider should be on the top and the extra part should be here on the bottom. And then you're gonna pull it down underneath this rectangle ring and wrap it around just like that. See? So stinking cute, so easy. And now, this part is a little tricky, but we need to put the rivets on here just like we did with this end over here, or you can sew it, it's up to you. So for these ones, I do like to mark them with a pen first so I can get an idea of how I want it to look. So I'm gonna grab my big press, just kind of smush this down and twist it and punch out my holes. Once you have those holes punched out, grab your rivets and just get them in there. And I'll grab my press that has the die for the rivets on it and just carefully press these down and there we go. The bag is done. It looks so good. Wow. So here's the thing. When I made that first navy bag, that, honestly, I was like, that's the prettiest bag I might have ever made. And then I made this one today throughout the tutorial. And this, this might actually be the prettiest bag I've ever made. This is gorgeous. And I know it's a little, it's a little outside of what I normally pick. It has a very natural look to it, but that's what I love about wax canvas is wax canvas has a beautiful worn look to it. You see that it just, it just gets better over time. It just looks better the more you wear it. So as you saw on this one, we did decide to use quilt cotton on the front and the back, which I do love. I love the look of it. Uh, durability wise, it is more likely to stain and it is a little bit difficult to clean. So you might want to spray it with some Scotch Guard or some sort of protectant coating uh, just to help it last a little bit longer. If you wanted to try water resistant canvas with a print, definitely give that a try as well. There's lots of options out there. But again, this rifle paper, I mean, it's just, this is like, I picked stamps because I was thinking, I was like, this would be a beautiful, like travel the world bag, right? That's what it reminds me of, of a, of a traveler, not a tourist, not, you know, not just like, just going out and about, like this is a traveler, like you are exploring the world, right? I don't know, that's how I feel about it. So I hope you guys love making this bag as much as I do. Thank you as always to Country Cow Patterns for allowing us to use your patterns in our tutorials. We love them over here, they are so fun. I know, every time I pick a pattern from them, I'm like, oh, but I also wanna do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. Like, I could just do like three months straight of nothing but Country Cow. So if there's any patterns of theirs you'd like to see on the channel, please make sure you comment them down below and I'll add them to my list. I hope you guys are having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. <laughs>